On the conversation, we take you to Ghana, where thousands of protesters have taken to the streets in the capital, Accra, demanding an immediate end to illegal mining activities that have led to severe environmental degradation and pollution of water bodies across the country. The demonstrators accused politicians and the Inspector General of Police of complicity and greed, claiming that their inaction has exacerbated the crisis. The protests, which began earlier this week, highlight growing frustration among Ghanaians over the government's failure to address the rampant illegal mining in the country, commonly referred as Galamsi. This practice has not only devastated local eco ecosystems, but has also contaminated drinking water sources, posing serious health risks to communities reliant on these water bodies. Uh, William Bodhi, Executive Director of Educate Africa Institute, joins me um, to talk more about this. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Bodhi, for joining us. Welcome. Uh, so let's start by first understanding what is actually fueling illegal mining in Ghana. Uh, Mr. William, can you hear me? Yeah, I can actually hear you. Uh, yes, we want to have an understanding of the factors uh, enabling illegal mining in Ghana because that seems to be um, the bane of the issues that we have seen between the government and protesters uh, of late. Okay, um, greetings to our cherished viewers and also listeners. Um, there are a lot of factors, uh, I mean, uh, helping people to um, get into illegal mining in this country. You know, uh, they are using these factors as an excuse and Based on that, it is difficult for them to uh, listen to those who are advocating that they should uh, stay away from that uh, uh, bad activities, which is also devastating a lot of uh, natural and artificial resources in this country. One major factor has to do with uh, unemployment situation in the country. Uh, unemployment situation in Ghana, I am telling you, it is a dire situation. A lot of graduates have completed university and they are home. So when you go to the mining areas, um, all of them are resorting to the illegal mining activities at their last home. So it is difficult for them to uh, live without getting involved in illegal mining activities in the country. And that has become a, a bigger barrier for the government to fight the illegal mining. You know, uh, way back 2017, uh, the current president of uh, this country, His Excellency President Donald Dankwe Gufuado, uh, pledged and even used his presidency on the verge that uh, he's going to fight Galamse and protect the resources we have, including the environment. But my brother, as we speak, it is out of hands. So uh, many Ghanaians, including Educate Africa Institute, we are of the view that we need to declare a state of emergency so that we put a stop to any activities that relate to uh, mining, including the so-called uh, small-scale mining, because a lot of people are using that um, yardstick and they are really involved in illegal mining. Hmm. Uh, is, one uh, of the things uh, you mentioned is um, unemployment rates in the country yes. being on the high. Uh, does it seem as though we have an administration in Ghana that seems not be, to be paying uh, attention to the need for job creation uh, to get the youth engaged? Is that what you mean? Uh, um, we have a whole ministry uh, that is in charge of youth employment in this country. But it looks as if after getting the appointment, they just go sit in their uh, chair comfortably without working. So those ministries are not uh, benefiting the citizens of this country. And as I say speaking, um, we usually talk about this illegal mining, but you know, when you delve into it, illegal gold mining is a significant concern in Ghana with uh, demonstrations, you urging the government to address the issue. The environmental and social impact of uh, illegal mining are alarming, including deforestation, uh, water pollution, and exploitation of local uh, communities. These are the reasons why uh, some of us are demonstrating peacefully 
by telling the government to take immediate action. But those ministries who are supposed to create jobs after numerous promises are failing to deliver their promises. So uh, but, it's but we have an become, economy. Uh, we, we, we have a Ghanaian economy that is struggling unemployed uh, as we speak. in the country. Uh, Mr. 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 Okay. we have a Ghanaian economy that seems to be struggling as we speak with um, debts, rising debts. You know, today we just talked about um, a restructuring process that has been approved uh, by bondholders for a country because they're not able to meet their debts. Um, the funds are dwindling. I'm talking about the revenue now dwindling for a government. So when it comes to coming up with initiatives or measures or policies and implementation, don't you think that the government is handicapped and it's not as though it is not willing to do what it's needful for its people? I, I, I will never support that the government is handicapped. You know, uh, we vote for leaders to solve problems. There is uh, a lot, there is a, a, a challenge that has to do with youth unemployment in this country. When you go to those Galamsey sites, a lot of the guys involved are youths. And we voted for leaders based on the promises and the policies they gave it to us during their man manifestos and other uh, political activities. We got it and we voted for these people. Now, when you come to Ghana, in terms of uh, good production, uh, I, I would say we are on top. We are on top. We are doing well. But unfortunately, when you go to the mining areas, you could see rare poverty. In fact, there are a lot of paupers in those mining areas. But those leaders that we voted for are rich and worthy. Their friends, cronies, and relatives are really enjoying life. So it looks as if there are a lot of um, uh, honey, sugar, uh, sugar cane, and other stuff around us. But we don't, we don't have access to those things. Our uh, politicians are having the access, and they are, I mean, deliberately, uh, hung, uh, they are putting us to a, 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 point, a point that or a portion that we always find ourselves in a hungry man. So the youth are finding it difficult to listen to the leadership in terms of uh, them instructing us to stay away from the illegal mining activities. Besides that, aside the, 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 the politicians or the political class who are suffering to deliver their promises, that they gave it to us some time ago. Our traditional leaders are not also helping. And it looks as if they are one in camera with our political class. That mm. is what is happening. Unfortunately, in Ghana, most of the political class and the traditional leaders are involved in Galamse. So when they come out uh, live on TV, radio station, uh, uh, shouting here and there that we are going to fight against Galamsey. They are owning the concessions. So they go down there, tell their people that, you know something, don't mind them. We just went there to say something for them to know that we are aggressive to come and deal with the situation, I, but don't mind um, them go and do Galamsey. Mr. Mr. Bodhi, I like to, I like to find mind. out. And we did. I'd like to find out if there are empirical evidences to prove that um, the political class uh, in the country are involved or are sponsoring illegal mining in the country. I don't know if there's a way you can share with us evidence that proves that. The, the typical empirical evidence I can uh, give you right now. Okay. When you go to Google, you could type Professor Frimpong Watin. He, wo he was... Uh, Minister of State, and our president charged him to do thorough investigation about illegal mining. And his findings told us that some key political class are involved, including those in the Jubilee House, are involved in illegal mining. In fact, he emphasized uh, on some names who are very key and they are well known. But unfortunately, our president failed to take up that information. And at the end of the day, that minister was sacked. As mm. we speak, that minister is really disappointed in our current president for not working on the, the investigation that uh, he was charged to 
uh, work on. Besides that, there was an investigation that was orchestrated by Anas, Arimiyao Anas. He mentioned some key political class who are close to the president. And still, those investigations or those documentary came out as of no use. The president and other political class who were supposed to take up that documentary and put it into good use, and that could even help has fight the illegal mining and eradicate or reduce the rate at which the devastating is going on. It didn't happen that way. And due to that, uh, many Ghanaians are disappointed in our current uh, administration. Mm. My brother, you know, dealing with illegal mining in this country, now I would say it is epidemic in Ghana because when you go to a certain district in Ghana called uh, Arin, Babies are born without ears, nose, eyes. Wow. They are really deformed in the wounds of their mothers because of the mercury and lead, the cyanide that uh, are made in the water that they drink in those areas. Unfortunately, those in cities like Accra, Cape Coast, and Kofrudia, we are all affected because the water that we drink, we fed them from this more and the bigger and the larger uh, rivers that uh, around uh, us. So the illegal uh, mining situation in this country is now epidemic and we need to delve into it, reduce or eradicate it by stopping any scale, small scale mining or any uh, related illegal mining activities in this country. For uh, us so to be safe we, in the country. We, we, I don't we, know why we've been. We've Mr. Bodhi, we, we, we know this. there are protests. Uh, we know there are protests, and um, from what you've said, it seems as though um, the government uh, might probably not be willing to do anything uh, about, you know, dealing with issues around illegal mining and its attendant effects. I I'm wondering, uh, what has been the position of um, the, the police now in, in the country? Now, I'm talking about the Ghanaian Police Service, because we've also heard that there are reservations as regards um, their own investigations to when it comes to uh, identifying and nipping um, the actors in this regards. Would you say they're also complicit in this? Uh, you know, uh, the, the, the funny side of this issue is that these uh, demonstrators are doing it on behalf of every citizen of Ghana. But unfortunately, it looks as if uh, the democracy that we always preach about, we do not understand. Because these demonstrators are there and they are emphasizing on what the advice that our president gave us on the 7th of January 20, uh, 2017 and also renew it on the 7th of January 27, uh, 2021 that we should be citizens but not spectators. Yes. So these demonstrators are trying to be citizens, but not spectators. What it means is that if you are a citizen of Ghana and there is something going on in the country and you think it will not help the country to develop, you shouldn't sit on the views or eradicate that bad event. But unfortunately, the police is infringing on the right of this demonstrator. Yes, for demonstrating against illegal mining in the country. And because of that, one member of parliament has even uh, taken the IGP and also the attorney general to the court for oh, okay. infringing on the right of this uh, demonstration. Uh, okay. Uh, yes, that is what is happening. So um, moving forward now, what do you think, um, the, aside protests anyway, uh, what do you think the most effective way, should, what, what do you think the approach should be uh, when it comes to um, addressing the issue around illegal mining, because we see that about 54 activists have been arrested and detained in the last month, uh, most especially those who have been protesting um, against illegal mining in the country. So it seems as though we have a country where um, the state actors are against the citizens, but the citizens are the ones suffering the brunt of um, these illegal activities. So in terms of um, what can be done, critical steps to be taken, what do you think um, you know, people can do? You know, uh, these young people who are involved in the illegal mining activities are jobless. So they are all resorting to the illegal mining as the solution for them to, I, I mean, feed themselves and get something for a living. So creating jobs for the youths will be one uh, solution 
to help reduce uh, the illegal mining in the country. Besides that, we need to declare state of emergency because um, that will help, it will put a stop to every uh, mining activities in the country. Then we sit down as a country, rethink, and see how we can, I mean, get back into the mining activities and do it in a way that we will not destroy our water bodies, our forests, and our land. Mining started in this country in the 90s, but there wasn't anything like devastation of water bodies, uh, deforestation and our lands. This thing is going to affect our natural and artificial resources that help us to generate revenue in the country. So creating jobs for these young people who were jobless and due to that they got into the illegal mining activities could be a key solution. Besides that, declaring the state of emergency will also help so that we see what we need to do as a country because labor union have a, a certain day that if the government fail to declare state of emergency there will be a strike and yeah. i think that could be the, the solution for the government to act swiftly okay we, we hope it will not get to that before the government uh would respond uh, to this um critical issue bedeviling the country uh, as it is uh, we know there are regulations and there are regulatory bodies that are meant to uh, implement a certain rafts of measures to deal with issues around illegal mining and the fact that it is degrading um the environment as it is and we hope that the government will be able to stand up and do what is needful um, for its people. Um, thank you so much, uh, Mr. William Bordy, uh, Executive Director of Educate Africa Institute, for your time and your contribution on the show.